what's going on guys smh super mario hoops back with some more hoops and welcome back to part four of this 10 part series of teams we need in nba 2k20 um if you've been looking for that team that hasn't been in the playoffs for the past few episodes uh hint hint they might be in this episode so um yeah enough you know messing around stuff let's just get right into part four So at number 70, I'm going to put the 2001-2002 Boston Celtics. This team was led by Paul Pierce, the most successful Celtics team before the Big Three era with Paul Pierce on it. They also had Antoine Walker, who was an all-star multiple years with the Celtics. Some of their role guys weren't that bad either. Kenny Anderson at the point guard. They had Eric Williams at small forward. And then down low, they had Tony Batiste. Off the bench, they had a rookie, Joe Johnson, and also Rodney Rogers. So they weren't that bad. Uh, 49 and 33 on the season uh, they ended up getting to the Eastern Conference Finals where they eventually lost in six to the New Jersey Nets but I think a team with Paul Pierce and Antoine Walker as that dynamic duo definitely warrants a spot on this list at 69 we got the Baltimore Bullets from 1970-1971 uh, Earl Monroe was the point guard, the coordinator on this team. Then you had Kevin Lowry at the shooting guard spot. Jack Marin was the small forward, and Gus Johnson was the power forward. Both of them averaged about 18, 19 points a game. And then Wes Unseld, you know, he was a double-double guy, obviously. This is a few years after he won MVP. And then Fred Carter was their sixth man. They won 42 games. They were the second seed in the East. And it's funny because they actually wouldn't have made the playoffs if they were in the West, but they got all the way to the NBA Finals. Uh, I think a team with Earl Monroe and Wes Unsell would be cool to put in 2K. Even though they did get swept in the Finals, it still would be a neat team to have. At 68, we got the 1966-1967 San Francisco Warriors. Rick Barry was a monster this season. He averaged like 35 points per game. Then you had Nate Thurmond, who is obviously a Hall of Fame big man. Some of the other guys, like Jim King, he's actually in 2K. He's on those old Lakers teams with like Jerry West and Elgin Baylor. Uh, and then you got Al Adels. He's like a Warriors lifer. But overall, this team was 44 and 37 on the season. Made the NBA Finals and lost in six games. But this team, a lot of the others, as Shaq would call it, uh, actually were not bad. I mean, eight of the players on this team averaged over double digit points per game. So uh, yeah, this would be a pretty nice team to use. The 67 spot on this list goes to 1998-1999 Houston Rockets. This is when they had the big three, Hakeem Olajuwon, Scottie Pippen, and Charles Barkley for that one season all together. Uh, and it didn't really work out that well. But they also had Katino Mobley, who was a rookie that season. And then their role players like Michael Dickerson and Sam Mack weren't that bad either. 31-19 and 19 on the season. They were the fifth seed in the West. And they lost in the first round three games to one. Not too much success, but they would be a really fun team for team people to use in 2K. At 66, we got the 1956-1957 Boston Celtics. Now, I know we got a Celtics team with Bill Russell on it and also uh, Tom Heinsohn on it, but this team would also have Bob Cousy and Bill Sharman, so two Hall of Famers. Then you also got Frank Ramsey and Jim Luskadoff off the bench. Uh, you got 44-28 and 28 record for them for the whole season. They won the NBA Finals in seven games. So, uh, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see a pairing of Bob Cousy and Bill Russell on one team together. At 65, we got the 1974-1975 Chicago Bulls. This team had Storm and Norm Van Leer at the point guard spot. Jerry Sloan, who was Mr. Bull at the shooting guard. Chet Walker, who actually averaged like 19 points per game for this team. And then you got Bob Love, who was their leading scorer at like 22 points per game. And then Nate Thurmond, who was a bit older, but still very productive. And then off the bench, you had some guys like Bill Hewitt and Tom Borwinkle. 47 and 35 on the season for this team. Good enough for second in the West. And they ended up getting to the Western Conference Finals where they lost in seven. 
and they lost game seven by four points after they were leading and the warriors who they played ended up getting to the finals and sweeping the bullets so who knows this could have very well been a championship team uh so they deserve a spot in 2k So at number 64, we got the 2002-2003 Washington Wizards. And yes, this is the last team that I have on this list that did not make the playoffs. I mean, how could I not put MJ with the Wizards on here if I had all those other teams on here, you know? So um, the reason, though, I put this team instead of the season before is that, yes, they did lose Richard Hamilton. But in the offseason, they also got Jerry Stackhouse back for him. And then they also gained Larry Hughes as well. So I felt like this team was better talent-wise and be more fun to use. Uh, Christian Leitner at this time was still a very solid power forward. Brendan Haywood was a young center, the guy who like basically changed his number every single year with the Wizards. And then uh, Tyron Liu off the bench, you know, a quality backup point guard in the league. 37 and 45, obviously did not make the playoffs. They were the nine seed, uh, but just an MJ Wizards team would be a nice team to have in 2K, and I think it'd probably be the best team to have that did not make the playoffs. Now at number 63, this is kind of a weird one. I got the 2017-2018 New Orleans Pelicans. This is also the most uh, modern team on this whole entire list. Uh, obviously, you got the duo of Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins, you know, when DeMarcus was healthy before the Achilles tear. And then you had the backcourt of Rajon Rondo and Drew Holiday, who were both, you know, shutting down Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum in the playoffs. And then they also had Nikola Miritich off the bench for when the whole team was healthy, that is. And then also Etwan Moore at small forward. This team was 48-34, and 34, got the sixth seed in the West, uh, they did lose to the Warriors in five in the second round, but I just feel like that this the whole core of this team outside of probably Drew Holiday, because Etwan Moore is not a huge role guy on this team, at least not now. But outside of Drew Holiday, this whole core of this team is now so vastly different that I felt like I had to put them on this list. At 62 on this list is the 2009-2010 Atlanta Hawks. Uh, this is a very well-rounded team. Joe Johnson was the best player on this team, leading scorer at about 21 points per game. Then you also had Al Horford, who was also an all-star. And then you had Josh Smith, who was capable of giving you about 15 to 20 points per game on a nightly basis. And then you had Jamal Crawford, who won sixth man of the year off the bench and averaged 18 points per game for this team. Not to mention, they also had Mike Bibby starting at point guard and Marvin Williams also starting at small forward. So this team was very deep. Uh, they were 53 and 29 on the whole season. They got the third seed in the East and got to the second round where they eventually got swept by the Magic. But this team all around is very solid. I would like to see them in 2K. At 61 on this list, we're going to have the 1997-1998 Charlotte Hornets. This team uh, really followed the lead of Glenn Rice, who was their leading scorer at about 22 points per game. And everyone else was very solid on this team, such as Anthony Mason wasn't that bad. David Wesley was pretty nice. Bobby Phils was not bad. Vladi Divac was a pretty good post presence. And then Matt Geiger was a very good big off the bench. This team in the regular season was 51-31. and 31 which is pretty outstanding for them in terms of their franchise regular season success. Uh, they did lose in the second round four games to one. But again, this is one of those teams where it's like there's so much all around talent, similar to that Hawks team we just mentioned, that I feel like they definitely deserve a spot on the top 100 list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we are now four tenths, which is simplified to two fifths of the way through this series. So, um, yeah, we're kind of getting to the halfway point now. Uh, one thing I want to mention real quick, going back to that Pelicans team earlier in the video, is that the reason they're the most modern team is I don't really like to put a team in as a classic team the immediate year after 
So don't expect to see a Kevin Durant Warriors team on here because they just broke up or the Kawhi Raptors squad or any of those types of teams. So I just wanted to clarify that. And also, uh, if you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. My social media pages will be on the screen for you to see and follow if you want, which you should because you get updates about whenever I'm posting a video or maybe certain video ideas, whatever. So um, yeah, go follow those pages for more news. And uh, yeah, that's just about going to do it. I'm out of here. Peace.